We have a truly unusual situation on the floor. As you're all familiar, uh, a bill that came out of the Judiciary Committee unanimously <clears throat> that has, I think, 13 Democratic co-sponsors that we were able to get up on the floor without a motion to proceed, which meant that all of our Democratic friends agreed to proceed to it, has now become stuck because apparently they finally read the bill and found in it the so-called Hyde language, which is all of you certainly know has been uh, almost boilerplate in laws for 40 years. The, um, and they've suddenly decided it shouldn't be in this uh, particular measure. I think it's appropriate to note that in the Cromnibus in December, virtually every Democrat voted for the very same language. And I'm sure they have in the past if they've supported appropriation bills which have carried this kind of language uh, routinely. So uh, we're going to continue to press forward. I was pleased that four Democrats voted uh, for cloture. Hopefully there will be more. My first two years in the, in the United States Senate were so frustrating because we never had the opportunity to really have anything of substance come up that we could amend, that we could debate, that we could truly behave like United States senators. So I was very pleased when we started this year and our conference under the leader's uh, guidance opened up the process to what it was supposed to be. And now we hit this snag and we are back, I think, to blatant partisanship. And to have it take place on this very, very important issue where lives are at stake, where we have bipartisan support to have the other side come out and say they didn't read the bill, they were caught off guard, you know, come on. And the fact that there are advocates on both sides of uh, the Senate aisle who, who know this is a good bill, who know this is, will save lives, as Senator Fisher said, who knows that, that this is the right thing to do, are going to stand on this obstructionist um, uh, strategy that was, seems to be a, have concocted sort of out of the blue, and I believe caught many of them by surprise at the same time. So if all we're going to do is find a way for them to just say no, uh, I think we're going to hold firm on this bill because it's extremely important to the victims, to the people across this country. If you think about what the Democrats are saying about why they've changed their position, at the very best, they're confessing to incredibly bad staff work. They signed on to a bill um, in double-digit numbers. They just didn't really quite know what was in it. They voted unanimously to report the bill, but somehow it just hadn't dawned on them what language was in the, in the bill, even though, of course, they had voted for it numerous times before. Here's what I really think. Harry Reid and his Democratic caucus don't like to vote on issues. This was true in the last term of Congress, and Harry Reid led his caucus off the cliff in so doing. The tactic then was to fill up the amendment tree and not allow any amendments to come forward. I think they're disappointed that Senator McConnell, as the new majority leader, said we're not going to do that sort of thing on a regular basis. We're going to have an open amendment process. So what do you do if you're in the minority and you still don't want to take votes and you can't fill up the amendment tree because you're no longer in the majority? You, you filibuster motions to proceed to a bill. You filibuster even getting onto a veto message. You filibuster uh, committee reports that have already been reported and you prevent the Senate by denying 60 votes from ever getting to the issue.